So now raise the front part of the vehicle. The shock absorber should be securely attached to the chassis or axle. Check wheel is secure. Check shock absorber for excessive leaking. Also check suspension spring to see if it's securely attached and that there are no fractures or it's severely weakened. Again, check the tread pattern depth and breadth of tyre. Assess for lumps and bulges in the tyre, making sure there is no structural deterioration. Check the flexible brake pipe holes that they're not damaged, deteriorated, chafed or twisted and stretched or that the joints are excessively corroded. Check the brake pipes, brake discs and pads and all the other connections around the suspension system. Then we need to check for play in the ball joints and track rod ends. And once you've done that, spin the bearings around to make sure they move freely. Then use a lever to check for play on top mounts and ball joints. And now you'll need an assistance again. You are looking for excessive wear and free play in track rod ends, ball joints and suspension bushes. You are checking for any fractures or deformity that causes the steering to be affected. The assistant uses a lever to put suspension under pressure so you can check for excessive movement and play in the suspension system. So repeat the same process on the near side of the vehicle. Press the vehicle on free moving turn plane, turn the steering from lock to lock and observe the operation of the steering gear. If power steering is fitted, the engine must be running during the check. Check for excessive roughness when in operation. Raise the vehicle to check the security of the steering gear. Check for any points of the steering which are excessively worn or twisted, looking for excessive leaks in gaiters from steering pad. Check the wheel condition, look for any fracture or welding defect on the wheel, checking whether it is badly distorted. Check to see if you can see any fly or cord can be seen without touching the tyre. Assess for lumps and bulges in the tyre caused by structural deterioration. 
check if steering linkage is fouling any part of the vehicle. Visually check the steering components for wear, fractures and security. So once you've done that, lower the vehicle because we're going to do a pull and push test on the Pull and push the top of the wheel to check for play and check top suspension points. Then put your hands 9 to 3 to check lower suspension points. Now you'll need an assistant to pull and push the vehicle. This allows you to make visual checks underneath. Check suspension arm, ball joints, track at end. Make sure there's no excessive movement in the suspension area. And once you've done that process, repeat it on the other side of the vehicle. Observe the relative movement of the vehicle components. You are checking for play in the vehicle suspension and steering components. So raise the rear of the vehicle to check the axle at the rear end. Check condition of piping, mounts and brake cables. Check top of axle, bushes, shock absorbers and location of springs. Then lower the vehicle down. So again we're checking that the shock absorber is securely attached to the chassis or axle. Check the wheel is secure. Check the wheel condition, look for any fracture or welding defects on the wheel. Checking whether it is badly distorted. Check the tyre, assess for lumps and bulges in the tyre caused by structural deterioration. Check the tread pattern, depth and breadth of tyre. Check the wheel bearings, making sure they move freely or that the wheel is not distorted and likely to collapse. Check for movement in the bushes. And then we'll repeat the same process on the near side. And of course, check the condition of the tyres and the wheels, making sure there's no cuts or bulges within the tyres. And also, you must make sure that all the tyres are the same tyres on the vehicle. 